All I can say is wow, because the new info just keeps getting hotter and we are technically one day away until people can play this game. Let me know how hyped you are on a scale 1 to 10 in the comments below. Now are mounts faster than brooms in this game? Well we have some more insight. Twitter users claim that the game is bad due to its combat structure. We have a game expansion concept that has been revealed. You can enter all buildings in Hogsmeade supposedly and someone has gone and created a list of all the shown talents and perks so that we can go ahead and plan our builds early and lastly all of the quote unquote official graphic options have been translated from German which makes things a lot clearer regarding this topic so we have lots to get through a like is appreciated but turn that like into a dislike if you get to the end and it turns out you did not enjoy the video but if you could drop a like right now it helps a ton so first of all for those curious as to whether or not the mounts are faster than brooms which is a great question by the way just to give some clarity the brooms are faster but the mounts can fly higher so depending on your goal when flying it's basically a situation to where you just choose accordingly now, the combat system is bad? Well, according to Twitter at least. So a post says the following, I do not understand why people think the game is bad because they didn't like the combat system. I have seen some comments on Twitter that people decided the game is bad because they think the combat system feels like a third person shooter and simply boring. They seem to want to do magic that just shatters the earth or destroys the moon or something. Now here's my two cents on this. So from so many reviews it seems that combat is going to be a lot more fun than it already looks with so many challenging aspects to it within reason of course based on difficulty but overall I mean that is really important. Combat in a game is so crucial and so many games can master that specific element and ignore everything else around it and players will still have a blast. So there's that. Creative combat is a win. Plus, it's Twitter. Twitter can be very interesting at times for the most part. Now, open world London and its magical places, a concept idea for a game expansion by a user who goes by the name VHS199. And all I can say is this looks absolutely incredible. I'll leave the link to the full post below so you can go ahead and support. But another user said, which I think is a great theory that if they go for sequels to finish the last two years of school how they'd love to get the London locations in especially the ones that you can implement with direct travel and no need for big world building around them like the Ministry and Diagon Alley. So I'm super eager to see first of all if they will add an expansion and of course how soon after but most importantly where it would go in terms of years. Now I'm eager to hear your thoughts as well so leave them in the comment section below. Now all graphic options have been translated from German and it's been a rather hot topic these past few days but this really gives full clarity. So firstly fidelity is basically what it says in a nutshell a high fidelity rendering mode that favors resolution and graphics quality. You then have fidelity with ray tracing which says a higher rendering mode with high fidelity with ray tracing and then it just says re boot required to apply changes. Then you have performance which says a high screen rate mode that favors performance of course. Then you have balanced which is a rendering mode that seeks a balance between resolution graphics quality and performance and is available only on supported ones outputted device ultimately. Then lastly the HFR performance it says an ultra high screen rate mode that favors maximum performance and again available only on supported output devices. So that hopefully does give clarity on that again as I say it's been a rather hot topic so to say these past couple of days especially with so many comparisons going around and quite a lot of people 
people being skeptical on certain things as well. So again, this is going to be their situation. How important is 30 frames per second to you compared to 60 frames per second? And of course, depending on the console or PC you're going to be playing on, it will vary based on, you know, the system for the most part. But again, all of this stuff and just all of these options, in my opinion, are great to have. But again, I don't think it's going to change too much dramatically as far as that stuff goes in general. It just really comes down to how you are in terms of your visuals. And again, that's just so balanced, you know, across the entire field for the most part. Now, builders beware because someone has made a list of all the shown talents and perks on gameplay so far so that you can plan your builds early. So the post says the following. For your calculations, Hogwarts Insider said that the max level is 40 but your first four levels don't give any points so you got 36 talent points total supposedly and each talent takes one point total then it says talent perks to choose which is 48 points are limited it's basically in the inductory description of the talents menu and yes no respect according to hogwarts insider now the post goes incredibly in depth and you'll need to take notes because for the most part, it's going to be unique to your playstyle. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is leave a full link to the builds in the comment section below. But it's a really, really good read. So I highly recommend you guys go ahead and check it out. Now, they have nailed Hogsmeade and apparently you can enter all buildings. So a post says the following. Just watching a video focusing on Hogsmeade. It's magical and the shops are incredible. I've got to give it to the day and ultimately just give massive credit because if the rest of the game has this level of detail then we are in for a treat and that's where that links to what I said a moment ago where supposedly you can enter all buildings now just that alone all buildings if that is actually more or less accurate and factual that is insane because for the most part there are so many games out there that limit that accessibility right especially in I guess the key locations so to say for the most part so if they have done this that is massive and again it's given that whole unique experience and what's actually quite funny that someone mentioned as well is that does anyone else keep forgetting that there is an actual storyline because just all of the content and exploring as a whole looks absolutely fantastic and I think that's actually a very real thing I think some people do genuinely forget that this game does have what it seems to be an incredible storyline but because there's so much to just do in this world it really you know just takes you down that path of you having your own unique experience and that's something that we spoke about yesterday because of course there is that whole element where it's very kind of hush hush for the most part in terms of the characters well the main character his backstory aka your player right so you know going down that route and seeing everything else around it you know we came to that theory that it seems like it's just kind of you creating your own story for the most part because it's the whole wizarding experience that we have waited for for so long and it really seems like this game is going to deliver just from all the gameplay we have seen so far all the reviews and i genuinely think this is going to be one absolutely fantastic game but again we are not far away whatsoever and as i just said a moment ago it's your unique experience are you going to be a good wizard are you going to be a bad wizard well i've listed four horrible things that you can do in hogwarts legacy so check that video out that you see on screen because it does get very very interesting